Um, yep, I'm Will. I'm an animator and a filmmaker from uh, Scotland. I'm from the Highlands. I'm from a place called the Black Isle, which, uh, wow, someone actually knows where the Black Isle is. Uh, it's uh, not actually an isle. It's connected to Scotland. Uh, so it's a peninsula, just so you know. Um, this looks a little bit like what I do. I make a lot of uh, character animated stuff. I've been making short films for the last six or seven years since graduating from the Edinburgh College of Art. I still live and work in Edinburgh, but um, I'm making a documentary feature film at the moment, which is killing me. But uh, I'm getting there, and I hope that you would guys would hopefully go and see it when it comes out, hopefully next year. But I'm not talking about that. I'm going to be talking about my most recent animated short film, which is called Have Heart, which it's nice that wrote an article about two months ago when it went online, which was very nice of you. Thank you very much. Uh, and it's about the life of a GIF on the internet. So I'm going to show you the trailer, and then I'll talk about it. back there were vibrating a little bit. It's so exciting. Um, so this character uh, was born on a train journey between Edinburgh and Glasgow. So I've worked in a design company in Glasgow, a design company called ISO. They do a lot of stuff for museums and things for TV and stuff like that. Uh, but um, I was speaking to the senior designer there uh, when I started, and he talked about how much time he spent commuting uh, and he, he had worked there for over 10 years, and he said that basically he had spent a year of his life on a bus, which is just shocking. And he, he, he said that like, he used that time kind of wisely to like, learn software, which was Cinema 4D or something like that. And that really, got, that really panicked me and got me thinking. So I kind of started to throw like, shapes together. Because, I, again, I live in Edinburgh, like, like back and forth when I was doing this job. Uh, and I made this character that is a duck, by the way, you might not know, but it is it's a duck. Uh, and I, like, I kind of like just making characters uh, out of simple shapes and geometry and to hopefully like, get them to kind of tell a story that's a little bit more complex. Uh, just that contrast between simpli simplicity and telling, you know, you know, I don't know, making a drama out of it kind of interests me, I guess. So um, I made it into this little gif when I was on the train and uh, kind of found myself interested and in looking at it and feeling kind of sorry for the guy. I think he's a guy, sorry. There's a girl in the, in the there's a film that's made that I'm going to, you know, explain. But uh, like I kind of found it kind of pathetic, kind of like glass half empty, glass half full kind of idea. He's like trying to fly and he's falling to bits on the ground and he's doing a terrible job of it. Uh, but he's also not giving up. So to make that, you know, it's a GIF and it, it loops forever and whatever. So I was looking at GIFs and what they do. You know, they, I think the maximum amount of colors that you can have in a GIF is uh, like just over 200. And uh, so the first box over there is like, that's all the colors that are in half heart, and it's like, that's a great limitation to have. And then I noticed that you could kind of sort them by different things, like you can sort them by their hue and luminance or whatever, and popularity, that's kind of, I found that kind of curious. Like, uh, obviously, what it just means is that it's the most popular color in the image, but it kind of got me thinking about like, wow, I've never really thought about images being, like, their colors being more popular than other colors. That's curious. I wonder what like this, and then I started thinking really about what this GIF was. You know, if he's trapped online, like I kind of thought that maybe like we're all a bit like that. We're all kind of like staring at our, sorry to 
you know, judge you guys, but I do this. You know, like you're, you're constantly like, cla there's a constant clamoring for attention online. There's just this like constant stream of like footage and like new content everywhere. And it, it just seems to be overwhelming. So I thought I would start to try and tell a story about what it feels like to be alive online through this character that you've seen looping and falling apart. So I, from that point, I kind of, Decided to get some sound put on it. Uh, my mate Keith, uh, he's done all of our films in the past, and he like made this really digital, intense sort of sound. And he, he to the loop, and then I added these little likes that are like all the likes that I'm like liking as I'm, you know, sharing it with the world and thinking that it's really important when it's probably not. But start to feel a responsibility for this guy because he's like he's online forever, looping and feeling shit and you know what well, i need to tell a story with him basically that's what i was thinking so basically what happened was i made it chronologically uh without any plan without any store storyboard or animatic like an animatic's a film storyboard that i'm sure a lot of you know about uh but that kind of flies in the face of like how animation's made uh in that you would always make a storyboard but i really didn't want to because one, I didn't have any budget. I didn't have any you know, money to do this. I was working at a design company and I was commuting. So I thought I'd just try and make it on the train as much as I could uh, spontaneously, as spontaneously as possible. Um, so I started to think, okay, maybe he's trapped in his little square. It's like he's on Instagram or Twitter or whatever. And he like, maybe wakes up and then suddenly he's in a domestic relationship. I kind of thought that would be kind of funny. Uh, and like he's got a partner and she's like, what's wrong with you? And he's like, no, I'm just having a bad dream, it's weird. Um, and then I started sl like swiping left and right because I kind of feel like that's how we consume things these days. You know, we don't, you know, life doesn't cut. It, like we zoom in and we zoom out and we pinch and we pinch out. So suddenly the film was going to be made, you know, totally like without any cuts, just swiping left and right. It's kind of starting to become a little bit like, like the Truman Show if it was set in an iPad. That's what I was kind of imagining, because I love the Truman Show, so that's, that's not a problem. But, because um, he kind of starts to think that he is feeling like he's being watched. And he kind of is, because I'm manipulating him. So it's very, it's, you know, it's starting to become a kind of personal thing as I'm going along. And because I'm going to work, I'm thinking about work, and I'm thinking about, is life just work? It's like, uh, like, I take my work seriously, I guess. I, I make films and I think they're, I don't know, I put my everything into them, but is it like really stupid and does it matter? I'm not sure. I really, I don't know. I'm getting increasingly anxious making this film. Uh, so like, I'm starting to panic a little bit. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he goes to work and he, um, like his boss is like Mickey Mouse but like all the colors being sucked out of them. And he's just like not really impressed with the amount of work that um, he's doing and he's not like 3D enough or something like that. So he kind of kicks him back into work. And uh, now we're kind of like in a loop again. We're kind of went full circle. We've started with this loop and then I'm like unsure what I'm doing. So I shift perspective and I start to like add other loops at different points of the film. So I'm thinking about his partner now and maybe she's quite like the opposite of him. I think she's kind of zen. She's like into yoga and not really like, you know, just like the opposite of him. She doesn't really think like he does. He's kind of starting to have an existential crisis about what he's doing and what his job is, which is what I'm doing basically. Um, he leaves his work and he looks at the exit sign and kind of starts to think about his position in the world and starts to think that what he's doing is stupid and he should stop. So do I, that's what I'm thinking as well. Uh, goes home and uh, they have bread for dinner, like it's a duck's favorite dinner, that's what they, that's what they they've even got like a <laughs> picture of bread up there as well, they, they love it. Um, the kettle breaks and like falls to bits and it totally freaks him out because he's like, his world's crumbling around him. And he does a bad thing and he snaps at his partner and he tells her to throw it out, um, which pisses her off, rightly so, I think. He kind of goes in a bit of a grump and he goes home and he looks up at the stars, which are just these flittering pixels 
that are above him, kind of in the beyond. He lives in this white space, but he looks at that and he just thinks, is this really what it means to be alive? He's being kind of pathetic. His like, partner comes out and just says he's being melodramatic, so he just goes to bed anyway. He goes to work the next day, and uh, he is thinking about all these things, and then he loses his job really quickly and feels kind of shit about it. And uh, he kind of feels again like everything's kind of collapsing in on itself. So he has to go home and tell his partner that it's just, I'm sorry, I've lost my job. She's really cool though, and she understands, and she just says, look, you can do plenty of other things. So there's a little montage. By the way, what I'm doing is I'm talking you through the film, and then I'm gonna show you it from a point just in case I didn't mention that before. but that's Again, I made this film chronologically so I can only explain it this way. This is the only way it works for me, I'm sorry. But anyway, he tries three things. I feel like we try three things when, I feel like I try three things really hard when I really like have a problem. It's, I think maybe that's wrong, maybe it's just in film, I don't know. But I think a character, if they're faced with a real problem, you, you try really hard three times and then you give up. Um, so he tries these things and it doesn't really work to the point where he's faced with his partner and she's upset with him and she's, she says like, you're not really, you're not really paying, a, you're not really like communicating with me. And he just throws her a curveball and he just makes reference to the fact that there are just shapes on a screen and he's just being like, a dick, basically, to the point where he gets sucked out of the house because the whole time he's just been slowly pulled away from this partner of his. And uh, it leaves her still doing yoga, <laughs> but she's now in the position where she feels like she kind of, he's put her into this position, which is really awkward, where she now feels like she's being manipulated and yeah, and it's just not very nice of him, really. I hope you can tell that this is a immensely personal film. But um, <laughs> it takes us to the point where, uh, as I said before, there's no storyboard or, an or animatic or anything like that, but the film was made really kind of, um, like, anxiously, like I'm describing it, but, like, I'd come up with an idea on the day and then I would just try and do it. And I know that that's... I don't know, it's, I think that's a really difficult way to make a film, but that is the way that the, the film was made. So I'm hopefully, you know, communicating that difficulty. But um, we're up to the point in the film where he's gonna make like this drastic step and he's gonna try and make a break for it, from it, from uh, where he is. And I'm gonna leave you there and you don't have to hear me speak ever again. <laughs> uh, here we are.
As you uh, can probably tell, I'm not very good at explaining how I'm feeling about things, but that's probably why I make animation. So I hope you liked it. Oops.